We've kept him waiting till last. I know that with his heart it was a bit of a risk, but he's made it. Will you please welcome <laughs> the lovely Paul O'Grady? <laughs> Fella. Hello, fellas. Hi, right. What a lovely fella, Ben Stiller. In the nice and plan. lovely teeth. Did he? Yeah, well, yeah. American, you see? Yeah. American. But yeah. your teeth are looking good. Oh, I don't know. But I've hardly got any at the back. I'm like a bloody rabbit when You're I eat. <laughs> <laughs> Why just stick me in a room for two hours with cider and a gang of nice looking young men with no socks on? Was there sparks were flying? It's flying. Look, and I'll have been on the back five times with them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I like to hear you still got it in you. Oh, I have. And apparently they've had it. In... <laughs> hey, what? That no, will do, no, Jonathan Ross. no. Will that do? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I... Now listen. Doesn't Paul O'Grady look about as healthy as a man in his mid sixties can look, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? And yet, no. You you look great. You look so healthy and well. And I know you've had you've had two scares, haven't you? I've had two heart attacks. Yeah. That's yeah. quite something. It is. Uh, I have them like colds, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Not really? Like a dose of the flu. Yeah, yeah. I mean, on the Friday and out on the Monday. And but you work <laughs> flat out. I mean, you work hard. I know you have part of the year off, but you do five shows a week. Yeah. Is that okay? I mean, is that you you're okay with that? Yeah. I mean, you get yeah. It doesn't bother me. I mean. They've slowed down with me now, you know, there's no more doing all the stunt stuff where I got chucked over desks so, or... Yeah, so you might as well be out, you'd only be at home doing the same kind exactly. of thing anyway. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. You know, okay. I might as well be in the yeah. pub doing... Just that. sitting at home complaining about things. <laughs> moaning. <laughs> you do like a moan though, don't oh, you? Oh, I love a good moan, <laughs> not many. I wait, I lie in bed in the morning moaning. Bastards. <laughs> 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 Whose life can I ruin? Where's the mobile? <laughs> <laughs> Do you keep in shape though? Do you? I mean, presumably you're careful about what you eat. Do you go to the gym? Do you, no, do you exercise? No, I hate the stuff? gym. Oh. I absolutely can't stand the gym. I've got some equipment at home right. that's covered in cobwebs. You don't ever use it. And I'll tell you how long ago it was I was last on it. There's a can of cider yeah. <laughs> on the bench, which was three years ago before I had the heart attack. So three years. But I swim you... every day. Well, that's great for you, swimming. Yeah, it's a great yeah. exercise. And I can't you... be doing with all this bloody no, nonsense. No, that's not even an exercise, Paul. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, that's, that's the Queen waving, is what I you're doing I used to go, one, two, three, four, have a second. You can't decide. <laughs> one, two, three, four. No, it's not for me, the uh, Now, you live, uh, you live in... You have a healthy lifestyle, I thought, because you live most of the time... I know when you're filming, you're here in the town, but most of the time you live in the countryside. You have a farm. Yeah. Is it a proper farm? It's quite a big place. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 you have livestock? How many animals? I've got two pigs. Okay. Two, I had three goats, one died, so I've got two goats now. Um, a load you, of... Do you eat it when it dies? No. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Well, people do. People oh, do. No, it's a no. nice goat curry you can make. I'd sooner eat you. See? <laughs> no. It's not the first offer at tonight, <laughs> Cheryl. Hey. But it's a no to both of you. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm so... No, um, I couldn't eat them. I like my pigs I'm extremely fond of and my sheep I love. So but I... do you eat meat? Uh, yeah, I'll eat mince. As long as it doesn't look like... Meat. Okay. I can eat. If it's in a shepherd's pie, I can eat it. Okay. If it's a piece of steak with blood running out of it, forget it. I, I believe, I don't know if he's still there, Julian Clary bought the farm next door, is that right? He's my neighbour, Julian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love the idea of you and Julian Clary having a farm. <laughs> well, Julian thinks sort of. I, won't say, I can't say the word he calls me, but he, he, um, he, he thinks. He th he thinks I'm a bit low rents because he'll come round and there'll be a pig in the kitchen and he'll go, hey, hey, really? But we're, 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 we're a bit like Beth Davis and Joan Crawford, you know what? <laughs> we get, you wouldn't believe, they should take the conversation when we rip into the world of showbiz I can and, and imagine. slate everybody. I would love, well, wouldn't it be good? Can't we encourage Dale Winton to buy the farm on the other side <laughs> and get, get a, like, a really big gay farming community going? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about your dogs, OK? There's Buster right there. That's Buster. And Buster's been with you how long? 13 years. He's a natural. He's like a he showbiz is, natural. Yeah, he, he seems to be... You put him on that desk, he stays there, he doesn't he? Uh, and ignores me. Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk to me? And I believe he has a book out, is that right? We he, have, has. Uh, he has a yes. book out for Christmas. <laughs> it's, uh, Buster, there a dog, sir. <laughs> it lifts the lift. It's a tale of rent boys, cocaine, <laughs> late nights, <laughs> the Rolling Stones. Uh, no, he doesn't. <laughs> Paul's got a book out at my mother's knee. I there love that. Go, so that. I'd sooner that you one. You can take this one. <laughs> <laughs> one I'd I don't sooner know what's read in that. It. That's fabulous, that. Oh, so there's Olga. So, and they, they, they get on well together, I guess? 
See what I have to dress as. You don't have to... I mean, how would you feel if you went into work and they said, you're a fish finger tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm 53, for God's sake, you know? But I put it on and I sit there. That's you, and that's obviously an Easter theme <laughs> show, I imagine. No, probably not. No, it's just, uh, <laughs> just fancy this. I've been on Heidi High permanently. <laughs> would you give it up? I mean, would there be times when you think, OK, this is too much work five days a week? Every day. I wake up every day with the hump. I have done since the day I was born. Seriously. No, seriously? Every day I but sit that, up in bed and I think, oh, I hate the lolly. Uh, <laughs> that's why I used to love doing panto. Because yeah. on the matinees you could go in and say to the audience, I hate you and I hate kids and I hate pensioners. And they'd laugh and I'd think, I mean it, you bastards. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, you won't be able to get away with it now. No. People will know it's for real. Well, I thaw through the day. As the day goes on, yeah. I thaw. You, you get relaxed. You, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, when, so what is it? That, why do you wake up in a bad mood, do you think? No, I'll tell you what it is. With all the heart medication, you know, when you take oh, all really? this, there's a lot of side effects. So oh, you sort of wake me. up and you feel like you've been hit in the head with a pan. So you, it takes a while for that to wear off? Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. So you get off at these jobs where they say, call time six o'clock. It's not for me, pal, it ain't. Yeah, but you wouldn't be one to I'd get be there with an axe. <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, do you miss touring? I, mean, I know this is live performance, but do you miss doing yeah. uh, stand-up and being, and being uh, Lily? Because Lily Savage was a huge hit and people loved Lily Savage. And I know it was a big palaver getting the gear on, but do you ever miss being her? No, not at all, not at all. No, 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 no. Not at all. Yeah. So you don't, you don't miss, but do you miss the persona of no, Lily? No, not at all. Not at all? No, no. In, because she was kind of based on, on people you knew way back when, wasn't she? There's... Funny enough, right in the book, yeah. I realised... Well, hold on, it... because the book is out, the book's out for Christmas, and it's kind of, it's part of your life story, but it's not your whole life story, is it, by any means? No, it goes, it goes up, up to, up to yeah, so yeah. it's from when you were a youngster, yeah. growing up to when you were 18 years old, yeah. and you met, you know, what a bunch of characters you have in there, some very funny stories about which I'd like to touch on a couple, but who, who's kind of inspired Lily in that period? I think sort of all that, like, because it's quite a matriarchal society, our family, because a lot of the men were away at sea. So you had tough women, you know, you had my Auntie Chrissy, my Auntie Annie, my mum, who was a bit of a maniac, depending on whether the moon was full or not. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, really. So it sort of, it's, <laughs> it sort of rubbed off on me. Yeah. You know, my mum had a, a sharp tongue. So did my Auntie Chris. My Auntie was very pious, and I've, I've, I've sort of absorbed that from her. Yeah. So I'm very, with doctors and priests, it's, yes, doctor, yes, father. Yeah. And I get that from my auntie Anne. Yeah. You know, I'm the fag with auntie Chris. And, I mean, so I've, I, it's, it's come from them. It's a mixture of them all. Your mum comes, you know, you either, but your mum, it's a very vivid picture you draw of your mother. I mean, and it, she comes across as just a, a, a lovely person to be around. Oh, do lovely, you think so? Yeah, I think she comes oh, across as a good. lovely force yeah. in your life, you know, and yeah. uh, I'm sure you must miss it terribly, but I love the stories in it about her teeth. Yeah. Um, because she had them out, she didn't really need to have them out, did she, when she had them out? Well, it was sort of the national health, you know, when that came in, you could have all your teeth out and you'd have the Hollywood smile. Yeah. So, you know, so everybody in Birkenhead had all the teeth ripped it was out. A, it, people just went and did it, didn't yeah. they? If they thought they'd look a lot better, yeah. they'd, they'd never forget the dentist. Well, a working not? class diet, you know, a poor diet, you know, I mean, not looking after your choppers. And, yeah. So the, the, the pots were, were, yeah. were pretty rancid, so they'd have them out. <laughs> <laughs> and my mother, she had these teeth in, and the first time my auntie Chris saw her, she went, Jesus Christ, Mr. Ed. Because she had this. I <laughs> think <laughs> She'd do all this bit. But I realised it was an act after she used to do it for me. Well, that's what's because you, you, you said she said, I hate these, and she used to throw them around. Chop them across the floor. And you'd come back, if you, if you got lucky one night, you'd come back and you'd have someone on the couch, oh, and you, you, you'd look up, and there'd be the teeth grinning at you. Don't, and you couldn't. Don't. Uh... The way, you get a tail home, right, you know how you, uh, you put the voice on, I'll come in, and you'd be sat on the couch, you know what I mean, you just start to think, right, get down to bit. give him a shofty quick, get shot of him, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you'd lie on the couch, and there'd be a library book here like that, with a set of false teeth embedded in it, <laughs> and you sort of have to go, <laughs> and hide them, and then she'd be screaming in the morning, where's my teeth? <laughs> so yeah, the, the teeth were a big part of my life. And did you, did you ever have the conversation, which now I know, you know, it's probably not the big deal, where you sat down and said, Mum, I'm gay. I'm... I did. I went to um, a, a sort of rally with the CHE, which was the Campaign for Homosexual Equality. Wow, what a, what a C-A-C. So C-H-E. Yeah. This was in its embryonic stages. Yeah, yeah. And we all went to Morecambe. Um, we didn't do much rallying, you know, we all had it. <laughs> why, why, why Morecambe? I don't know why, Mo why, we, why we were inflicted on Morecambe. I have no idea. Anyway, we went to Morecambe and I came back all fired up and I said to her, I'm gay. And she totally ignored me. Completely. She was rooting under the stairs for a birdcage. Don't ask. <laughs> 
And I said, I'm coming out, you will you better get back in for I knock you back in. <laughs> you know, she was like, gay me ass. You know, it was like... So, but it, I guess it wouldn't have come as a huge surprise to her because she must have. I think it would have, because don't forget our girlfriends as well. Yeah. You know. So... But, you, but she knew you brought guys back occasionally, didn't she? No. No, she didn't. Christ, no, she'd have been down the stairs with a bottle of holy water lashing it on me. You're joking, aren't <laughs> you? You're joking. But in the book, because you say, you know, you'd bring a guy back to the couch, I assume she knew what was no, going on. No, she was unconscious on Valium upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think I'm going to breeze in and say, Mum, I've got a shag. <laughs> you don't mind, do you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you go. Well, that's, yeah. why, that's why I was saying, what a lovely woman. I no, thought how tolerant. She'd have killed me. <laughs> Did you, uh, did she, she saw your child being born, didn't she? Did you, was she around when you had your baby? No, I kept that quiet as well. So you kept a lot of secrets? Kept everything right? quiet, Why yeah. did you keep so much quiet? Bloody terrified of her, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll just breeze in. She's had a heart attack. Now, I'll come in and say, by the way, Mum, I had a phone call this morning. Um, you're going to be a granny. But might she not have liked that? Uh, we weren't married. And also, um, the, the mother of the child was a little bit older than me. All right, so, you were, so there were a lot of reasons why you, you didn't want to share that. Yeah, yeah, and I thought she'd kill me. You've just become, here's uh, the exciting news, I don't know quite how long ago it was, but you became a grandfather. He's 18 right? months now. 18 yeah. months old, so you've got a little grandson. Yeah. And how do you, do you like that? Him. Do you like that yeah, experience? Yeah, yeah, I'm mad on him. Do you see him a lot? You say as much as you like to? Yeah. How yeah. lovely, that's what a lovely thing. I don't thing. see him as much as I'd like to, you know what I mean? I'd like to sort of live next door so I can keep an eye on him. I love the idea that you're a granddad now, you know, it feels right, because I know, uh, despite the, the vinegar that you pour out sometimes, you're a very sweet bloke. And oh, I know you, yeah, you are, you're incredibly sweet, oh, like, I know not. you are, yes you are, <laughs> whether you like it or not, we all know you are. Um, so congratulations on that, that's a lovely thing. I'm hoping there will be the second, when will the, the second book be out? Um, I don't know, I mean, so, so, as again, it might be out next week, the speed, I'm at it, I'm like no. a maniac. Because <laughs> this one took you longer to write than it should have, didn't it? This has been delayed, hasn't it? Yeah, because I had a year to write it and all I did was talk about it. Yeah, I'm yeah, writing yeah. the book. I'm yeah. And did nothing. Yeah, yeah. And then I wrote it in six months. It's, uh, it's out September 24th, Paul O'Grady's book. It's a great read. Uh, Paul, continue success with the show. Cheers, John. Okay, I love watching it. I Are you going to come on it? I would love to come on. I've wanted to come on for a while. Dress it up as a fish finger. Oh, <laughs> you know what? I'd probably quite enjoy that. You'd love it. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'll agree. A very entertaining man to spend some time with. Mr. Paul O'Grady. Yeah.